Jean-Luc Godard argues that a story should have a beginning, middle and an end, but not necessarily in that order. Watching a film by today's director is like having an exquisite cocktail. Unexpected twists, ordinary ingredients combine to make you feel extraordinary. And the next day, you can't quite remember what happened, but you know you liked it. I'm Martina Minow, and I am, of course, joined today by Harriet Thistle, director of The Little Mermaid in Dagenham. Welcome, Harriet. All right there. How are you doing? Oh, Harriet, I'm so pleased to have you here today. I've been trying to book you for some time, but you are a busy woman. Well, that is right. I have been extremely busy with my YouTube channel, which I do with my daughter. And of course, I've been directing, well, for the last two years anyway. I talked about directing a lot before I actually did directing, of course. Absolutely. It's always good to talk about what one's going to do many years before one does it. It makes people think you're much more talented than you are. Well, I am actually very talented, um, but I know that you know that, Martina. Just some of the listeners might not know that. Harriet, I know you peg yourself as an influencer, and I'm influenced by you every day. Now, The Little Mermaid in Dagenham, I see a lot of you in this film. I do, Harriet. I'm an avid follower of your Insta stories, and I saw the inspiration. But for our listeners who maybe aren't so familiar with your work, tell us where the idea for The Little Mermaid in Dagenham came from. Well, I had so many different ideas that I was looking forward to exploring. But what I really wanted to do with this was understand how I could portray the battle between the sea world and the basic world in Dagenham. So I thought about that a lot and it took a lot of talking and thinking about it to really understand it. And I thought, where do I find my influences from? And I've always really, really liked Disney. I really, really understand those stories and relate to them. So I thought I would bring in this mermaid aspect to it as well. Absolutely. And I, and I really saw that tension between two worlds, between the sea and between Dagenham and the dynamic between them. Talk to me a little bit about your protagonist. What is your main character all about? Well, she is a person who started off life very challenged. Mm -hmm. um, she went to a really rough school in Dagenham and she was bullied. So there's bullying aspects in there as well. It's all about how she started to use some of her influences around her, some of the things that were happening to try and turn her life around um, and also do what she wanted to. To do she wanted to be a massive star she wanted to be loved by everybody and um, it's all about her journey and how she really wanted to come from that really challenged area all the way to being a, a massive star I mean if I think about it it's a bit like my life oh Harriet and I'm not one for a private confession but you won't believe this Harriet but I Martina Minow I was bullied at school can you believe it no one liked me I know, shocking. So I really identified with that too. And there is a really moving scene towards the beginning of the movie where we see our protagonist getting bullied at school and, and it broke my heart. Let's cut to that now. Do I want to go to the dance with you? No, you've got a tail and fins. Well, I was only asking. I, I thought maybe I could be part of your world. No, no, mate. Like, Is it because I've got red hair? Yeah, you've got red hair and you're wearing seashells. I mean, like, come on, love, put on some fake tan. My dad made me these seashells. I know you're poor, but, I mean, seashells is really scraping the barrel. I'm princess of the sea down there. Yeah, well... All right. All right, Eric, well, thanks for letting me down gentle, like, yeah. yeah. Don't worry, love, I know I'm a soft touch, so uh, just don't get involved with uh, anyone else. So, Eric, do you mind if I keep making out with a statue of a man I found? Yeah, Nilford way. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the only rock hard thing you're going to get. She wanted to be part of their world. Oh, heartbreaking, heartbreaking to see her rejected like this. I really identified with it and I think many, many of our listeners would too. Well, absolutely. And Eric goes on to treat her, you know, worse and worse, actually, as the years in, in the school go on. And, you know, Eric gets himself into a lot of trouble eventually with her friends. Um, and we really see that, you know, in, in what I'm trying to portray, I think, is that sort of gang ethics that go on in Dagenham. And it's another thing that was really important to me to show. Yes. And, and I just feel like there's such realism in this film that even though she's a mermaid... 
I really felt like I knew what she was going through. And, and Eric's toxic masculinity, that's very, very topical right now. There was a wonderful standoff scene between Eric and his gang and Ariel and hers. And uh, yeah, it got a little feisty, didn't it? Let's cut to. All right, listen, you mug. There no way you and your gang of sea creatures is going to take on us land mammals. All right, all right, leave it out, Eric. I've put up with this nonsense for too long. It's time. Fishy friends of the sea, attack. Oh, 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 by Neptune's trident. Uh, hurry back in the water, Flounder. Um... You mug, you can't take us on on the land with your gilly friends. Well, why don't you follow us to the Thames estuary? Then we'll get you, Eric. Then we'll get you. Maybe I will. In fact, I'm going to get in right now. No, don't get in. That's my cousin, Great White Shark. Oh, there there were some really classical vibes there. It reminded me of the sharks and the jets. You could call it a wet side story. It was really quite tense. Absolutely. There was a moment where I really felt the repercussions of this, when Eric gets lost in the Thames estuary and suddenly his gang is nowhere to be seen. Is that a metaphor for your own love life? Well, I wouldn't put it exactly like that. Um, I'm extremely popular and, and have lots of um, different suitors, of course. I was more actually exploring it for other lonely people. You know, I think it's really important, especially now when, you know, dating is more online and all of that. You know, I've never done it, obviously. But um, I think that other people, you know, it really helps to make them see that there might be more beautiful partnerships that, that they could have out there, you know, looking at all these different options. And sometimes you need to just venture down a wet little estuary to find real love. Let's cut to the scene where Eric gets lost and is saved by an unlikely hero. Thames Estuary, Thames Estuary, darling I'm lost, I can't find my boss. Thames Estuary, over in Essex they're all dry. Over here I'm on the fly, I am devoted all my time floating Thames Estuary. Eric, the fetid whispers of chilling death press my bony fingers against your shoulder. Theresa May, what are you doing here? Yes, that's right. But a few scant miles from my constituency of Maidenhead, and a few scant layers of hell north of my queendom, I come here with one simple request. Sink, drown and sink. Who knew you were the sea witch? Of course, the amphibian that lives on land and beneath the water. I also love to take the voices of minority communities and just throw them the fuck away. I'll save you, Eric, but on one condition, you poor unfortunate soul. Vote conservative. 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 Oh, it was May in Dagenham. My gosh, I didn't see that coming at all. But what a villain. I've never despised anybody quite like I despised her. Just wanted to punch her right in the noggin. Yes, an excellent villain, I felt. Well, yeah, like, I didn't really know much about Theresa May, but my nan lives in Maidenhead, so, like, she helped me to build all of this story. She's actually been a pivotal woman to help me build this out, you know, and explore different ideas. And what's your nan called? Well, she's Agnes uh, Price, actually. You may have heard of her. She's a big dancer. Oh, yes, Agnes... Not the Agnes Price of the lickety split flip flop catapult shot. Yeah, that is her. She um she's done that all her life actually. Well, you know when my granddad was alive, he used to do it with her, but um sadly he's not anymore. Oh well, um I don't want to embarrass you, Harriet, but we have actually got a a message from your grandma. I didn't realise quite who she was when we got it for you. I, I'm a bit excited myself now. I've been a fan for many years. Here's Agnes Price with some words of encouragement for her beloved granddaughter, Harriet Thistle. Here we go. Hello, darling. I hope you're doing very well. I hope that you are publicising your new film. Oh, well, I'm very proud of you. I watch your YouTubes every day. 
the uh, very nice carer, I tell you, is a bit dishy. His name's Marcos. He sets it up every morning on my living room TV. It plays your channel first, and then it just sort of uh, lets the algorithm do its thing, really. It's, uh, it's a relief, but sometimes at 9pm you do end up watching a series of slime-making tutorials. But regardless, darling, I'm so, so proud of you. And just to show you how proud of you I am, I'm going to perform in audio medium only. My first lickety split flip flop shot in 20 years, ever since the NBA officially asked me to retire. Oh, thank you, Nan. Oh, that means so much to me. Thank you, Martina. I can't believe you got her to do that. <laughs> she talks about Marcos every day. She tells me things I probably shouldn't know. <laughs> he seems like quite the character. And, and I understand from, from a brief read of your Wikipedia file that actually your life has been structured around strong female relationships. I see it with your grandmother. I know that you work with your daughter. What words of wisdom would you give to the littlest thistle in the clan? Well, my daughter, she is she is a thistle growing into an absolute spiny bush. She is fantastic at what she does. Um, but what I would say to you is just listen more, love. Listen. Yes listen more that's what we all need to do and and i actually felt some of that maternalistic wisdom coming through we saw it with ariel and her little fishy friends but she's giving them some wisdom for life and you can tell she she's almost got that maternalistic tone to her the way she nourishes them and cares for them let's cut to that now good ariel i'm a blowfish what use am I? You're on the armor seahorse. What use am I? Oh, Flander. Oh, nay. The two of you are plenty use. Don't talk about yourselves like that. Life is what we make of it, you know. You've got to acknowledge the help that you've had, and you've got to acknowledge that at some points along the way you'll help others. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is if you can't do an amazing dancing basketball shot then you know just just try and listen listen to the waves and the water listen to the sun in the sky but not too close or you will suffocate just listen to yourselves most of all that weird contraption in your bodies that functions to circulate your blood or as we mermaids would call it the heart let your heart inform your choices and never ever date a boy who comes from family money make your own money well Harriet this live listen to my heart and it's not always led me well I feel I can talk to you so easily Martina you can any time you know after this we can catch up that's no problem at all and it's exactly this sort of thing you know that inspired me to bring in all of these different elements into my film and the thing I particularly enjoyed and it's no secret Harriet I've been very honest on this podcast. I am single. And I watched The Little Mermaid in Dagenham and I thought, I don't need a man to make it happen. I can stand on my own two feet. And I learned that from Ariel. I learned that from the way she, she and her fishy friends, they went off and they rescued Eric from Theresa May. I'm so tired of the Disney trope of the woman being rescued and you have reminded me that a woman does not need a man. And I, I would like to share with our listeners that very empowering scene where Ariel goes and rescues Eric because I watch it every day while I brush my long locks in the mirror and I look at myself and say, Martina, you can do anything. Let's cut to it. Actually, what you're saying about lower inheritance tax does make a lot of sense, Teresa. I'm starting to come round to this. Yes, yes. Hold on to your generational wealth. Hold on a second. I can see you up there, Eric. She's got you lashed to the mast. She's luring you towards right-wing thinking patterns like sirens to the boat of Odysseus. I'm a blowfish. I'm going to knock her off with my blow capabilities. <laughs> Amazing. Great work, Flounder. I'll get you, Ariel. You and everybody that believes in a quote. <laughs> Eric, I'm so glad that you're okay. 
but my happiness is not predicated on me serving or helping you. In fact, I'm going to leave you lashed to this mast so you can think about your actions. Uh, well, could you not please? I mean, I might die. I'm under the sea and I was only alive because of her magic. Oh yeah, I forgot about the magic. Do you know what? Let's, let's go to the shore and while we go, I'll explain to you how important my family's history understanding sailing knots was. See, despite being the daughter of the King of Atlantica and the sea, I was also have a, a great understanding of the difficulties of all classes. So after all, I was, and still am, the mermaid in Dagenham. The mermaid in Dagenham. And there was a real moment of chemistry there, and I thought... She's going to get laid in Dagenham. Well, yes, absolutely. I loved the movie. I really did. I have heard rumour that there is another in the making. Is that true? Actually, I have been working on my sort of combinations of my favourite Disney films, and I'd really like to do something with magic. So I would like to combine my trip to Australia with magic and my love of that classic Disney film. So Fantralasia is going to be my next film, all about magic in the outback. Fantralazy, what a wonderful film that'll be, a magic in the outback. Um, I have got a sneak peek of the trailer. Do I have your permission to play it? Oh, of course. Here we have Fantralazy, directed by Harriet Thistle. Right, for my first trick. Yeah, mate. You, what's your first trick gonna be, mate? Yeah. My first trick is gonna be to stop that bloody man's using all the water to wash everything up. I mean, Mickey, what are you on about, mate? We need to save that. Yeah, Mickey, this is the only water this side of Darwin. <laughs> I was just trying to make the brooms come alive. Not down here, mate. You behave yourself. Yeah, or else dingoes, they're going to come, they're going to eat your little eyes and your little wizard hat too. And then where are you going to be, eh? Then what are you going to do? You're going to enchant the bloody dingoes? Then we'll all be overrun by dingoes, mate, won't we? Dingoes, I'll tell you. Anyway, you want to uh, want to add to the centaur blaze? Oh yeah, they've, uh, in some of the, uh, the edits, the hair doesn't cover everything, you know? Spicy. Spicy. In a world where Australia exists and is full of magic, music and wonder, two Australians take you on a tour of the outback that's outback and in our hearts. Join us for Fantralasia. You see this kangaroo? It's beautiful and you can eat it! You see this dingo? It's beautiful, and you can eat it! Fantralasia. A fantasy down under you'll never forget. I've never forgotten a fantasy down under, and I'll never forget this. Thank you so much, Harriet Thistle. It's been an absolute privilege, and I've normally got a steely facade, but being with you, seeing your emotion, seeing your power, well... It's helped me discover another side of myself. So the little mermaid was made in Dagenham, but Martina Minow was made here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do you have any final words of wisdom to our listeners? Well, listeners, I know you're doing it right now. And as I said, this is what I say to my daughter. Uh, listening is the most golden thing you can do. Any time that you're listening, you're gaining knowledge that you didn't previously have. And in my case, that isn't very much. So, yeah. Listen, listeners, and listen good. The Improvised Movie Director podcast features Sabrina Luisi as Martina Minow, with resident improvisers Vicky Hawley and Rory Vieira, with special thanks to today's guest, Joe Tanner. IMDP is produced and edited by Steve Tanner. Theme music by Matt Brown and Johnny Griffiths. Episode artwork by Marty Sears. Additional music by Stan Babich.